Hi, you're listening to Book Chat with author Vivian E. Moore. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Hello and welcome to Book Chat. I am your host, Dr. Vivian e. Moore. I'm a little bit hoarse today, so just bear with me. Uh, we will get through today's show, hopefully uh, without any hiccups. All right, so uh, let's get straight to it. All right, so the title of today's show is, Oh, the Drama. And the title is Leveling Dramatic Overkill. All right, so we're going to get into what that is. All right, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you soon will. Now, I love a good story. Don't you? Okay, well, great stories have um, all the right ingredients. Okay, <laughs> like a cake or a casserole. Uh, you can tell I'm hungry. I haven't had lunch yet. Okay, but anyway, um, too much sugar. We know it can ruin a cake. The you know the, those of us who bake, we know that um, you know you got to have the, the 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 right ingredients to to pull that off. And uh, and too much of this and not enough of that can be disastrous. All right, so you know you can't substitute. Um, something that has to have um, specific ingredients, i.e. overkill. But, uh, you know, when you follow the recipe, uh, whether it's food or storytelling, it's hard to mess that up, right? <laughs> Some people can still do it, but for most of us, you know, if we, if we follow the uh, design plan, um, it pretty much turns out the right way. All right, so, um, you know, as, as humans, um, because we are humans, uh, which means we're not perfect, but uh, but we do require a certain amount of balance. And that's, uh, you know, and that that's in how uh, we walk, talk, and sleep. We got to have that balance. We got to have that perfect balance in um, in order to function properly. So, you know, so why wouldn't we need that in, in other areas? Um, you know, because we thrive on a levelized existence, um, and that pretty much covers every area of our lives. Um, by nature, we are excitable creatures. Come on now, be honest. You know you are. And, uh, and therefore, you know, we expect some type of dramatic reactions, um, and, which is typical considering otherwise. Now, if we something dramatic happened and, and we didn't react to it, you know, people are going to give us the side eye, like what the world is wrong with this person? Are they not human? You know, you know, that, that required some type of a uh, reaction because it was dramatic, but, um, but still, you know, too much of this and too much of that is not good. But when you have that, that levelized, uh, balance, then that makes everything okay. All right. So, um, you know, I, yeah, okay. I'm just going to be real for a minute. Um, talking about drama. Um, I have family members and, uh, and I'm sure you do too, that, um, <laughs> that you would rather not, uh, invite to, uh, weekend barbecues or holiday functions. Um, you know who you are. Um, because when they come, they bring the drama with them. You know, some drama is expected, but good gracious alive. You know, we don't need those people who are over the top dramatic. You know, everything is about them and and it just ruins the occasion. We don't need that. We don't want that. And so that's what we're talking about today is having levelized drama and not that overkill effect. All right. Um, you know, it, it reminds me of, uh, of the soaps my mother watched, uh, when I was growing up as a kid, AKA she called them the stories. All right. Um, there were three channels, uh, three hours of daytime drama, uh, that sometimes it was relatable. 
Uh, and especially when you compare it to uh to to some of your family members. <laughs> it's like, okay, I get it. I understand it. All right. But uh honestly, you know, it was entertaining. And uh, I mean, and who doesn't like a little bit of drama in their life? We need it, okay? Otherwise, our existence would be so dry. We got to have a little drama, all right? Um, so, um, and especially around the holidays. I mean, who doesn't like that that drunk uncle or drunk aunt that comes to the holiday party and livens things up, okay? But, you know, if it, if it goes overboard too much, then, you know, we got to sort of like, you know, put a rein on them and say, wait a minute now, y'all need to stop. But, but anyway, but when it's done in, uh, in equal measure, that makes everything okay. All right. So, so now that we've, uh, established some drama is acceptable, uh, when it's used accordingly. All right. So remember that it has to be used accordingly in order for it to be acceptable. Uh, unlike real life, uh, you know, writers, we use our skills to depict, to, to, uh, to depict drama in storytelling, don't we? Um, and a talented writer knows the correct amount of drama to interject into a story. Okay. Now imagine if we controlled the world through levelized drama, I'm rubbing my hands together like the evil scientists. Okay. <laughs> uh, it would be a better place to live for sure, but I digress. All right. Uh, the question is, can there be too much drama when writing that borders on overkill? Absolutely. Now, allow me to explain. All right. So some writers use drama as a way to maximize the excitement uh, of a particular scene. Now, we understand that some amount of drama is needed to sell a storyline, right? But there are ways um, to set a scene without dramatizing it to death. Yes. We want the emotional roller coaster ride effect, but interject it so that it falls under the heading showing versus telling. And I think that's when we get into the um the overkill of drama. When we want we wanna we wanna tell the story instead of showing uh the story. Now this is a sidebar, okay? Because I feel like I need to tell um you what showing versus telling is, okay? Excuse me, some of you may know, but there may be some newbies out there that don't really understand what I'm talking about. Okay, showing versus telling is a tool uh, using drama to tell a story through details and not a play-by-play -play description. Now, what I mean by that, I'm going to give you an example. So, here's a little, here's a little bit of, a, um, of some dialogue. Okay, so uh, we trudge through the desolate land parched as the earth beneath our feet the blazing sun and the arid winds pierced our skin like razors so basically what i did there was i showed you instead of telling you now what i what i said <clears throat> in layman's terms is terms is i'm in the desert thirsty and hot with the wind cutting me to shreds all right, so that would be instead of showing you through the through the um, the sentence or the paragraph that I just did. <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry, but you know I did give you the heads up about me being hoarse and everything. So, but anyway, I showed you instead of telling you, um, which has a greater effect because it it holds the right amount of drama, and I'm giving you I'm actually giving you a play by play description, but I'm doing it through um through being more creative in in how I tell you the story and how I show you the, by showing you the story instead of telling you the story because how flat would that be okay if I if I just said um I'm in the desert I am so thirsty it is so hot out here and this wind is just cutting me up okay so you know th that doesn't go over too well <laughs> It really doesn't. But if you do it in dramatic fashion, fashion, and if you use the right words uh, in the right tone, then there you go. You have the right amount of drama without overkill. All right. So, uh, you know, the recounting is dramatic without overkill. But, uh, you know, again, while showing versus telling uh, increases the excitement without overemphasizing the drama. 
So we got that. We got the right. We have the right ingredients to make that uh, uh, that recipe uh, the way it should be made. All right. So um, you know, and this same method uh, is uh, is essential when describing dramatic scenes. Um, you know, we want to create a visual image through virtual imagery, and what that is is that we want to tell the story. We want you to see it while we're telling the story. You know, we want you to be able to imagine what's going on um, without us telling you what's going on. So if you if you can if you can tell a story by showing it to a person so vividly to where they can see it, they can visualize it in their mind, then then you've accomplished the task. All right. So, um, you know, write a story um, correctly. All right. And uh, and you can achieve this by using the scenes. Um, through uh, strong verbs, uh, specific rich dialogue, and character reactions, okay? So this is how you show without telling um, and how you use the right amount of drama, okay? To make it, to make it effective and, and uh, not ineffective, okay? Um, you know, when you import real-life effects into creative writing uh, with equal parts drama and technique, then you have really created something special, okay? Uh, you know, let me use another example, action movies. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, how boring <laughs> would an action movie be, would be without uh, without any action, uh, without any special effects? Um, but, um, but sometimes now it can be equally ineffectual if it's overdone, all right? Um, AKA a weak storyline prompts overkill. And we've seen it. We've seen it in the action movies where every other scene, something dramatic is going on. You've got stuff blowing up over here. You got cars crashing over here and I'm like, Oh my goodness. Okay. What is the story about? Because all I'm seeing is a whole bunch of things blowing up and cars being crashed. Okay. I need some dialogue. I need somebody to tell me what in the world is going on. So when you have, um, good story development, uh, and, uh, which establishes, um, you know, a great narrative, a, a narrative that you can follow. So even though you have all of these other things going on, you still know what, what's happening in that story. You still have a, um, you still have a, um, a great understanding of what's happening in that story. Although you have all these other things happening at the same time, which, which they would say action, you have all this action taking place, but still, um, you have a distinctive storyline that the, uh, the viewer or the reader, um, can comprehend. So that way they know what's going on at all times. All right. So, um, so basically, um, what you should do is just keep all of this in mind, uh, when you're writing, uh, too much drama and not enough detail kills what may be or could have been a great story. All right. So just, just remember that. Remember all of these ingredients. We're going to, we're going to treat it as if it's a recipe, a treasured recipe. It's grandmama's special recipe. And that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to treat, um, uh, levelized drama. All right. So, um, so if you can remember the show versus telling rule, uh, and no matter if you write scripts or books, uh, the story will achieve the design goal without dramatic overkill. All right, folks. So that is the story for today. That is the show for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something useful. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that you will keep supporting me listening to this podcast, um, th where you can find, you can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay. So it's everywhere. And, uh, and I do appreciate that those who are listening, who are downloading, um, every week. And if you would just, you know, shoot me a message or, um, you know, give me the thumbs up. Tell me that you like it. If you don't like it, you can tell me that too. It's okay. All right. I need to know these things. So that way I can, you know, I can perfect it. I can make it better. All right. I can improve. All right. So, and that's the goal. I want to improve on everything that I do. Um, you know, so maybe one day I will master it, but I'm working toward that goal. So, I need your input to make that happen. All right. So, um, you know, just remember, um, to tell those that, uh, that you love the most, how you feel about them, because today is not promised today. I mean, tomorrow is not promised today. may be the only chance you get to say it. So on that note, I love you. I hope you love me back until the next time you hear my voice. God bless you and goodbye.
loved what you've heard on this week's episode? Well, well, the answer is simple. It would mean the world to us if you could head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and achieve even greater things. Thank you. Thank you.